Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining on to the stream tonight. It's another episode of uh, Let's Talk About It. Uh, to the moderators, if you can hear my voice clearly, put a one in the chat box. To the moderators, if you can hear my voice clearly, put a one in the chat box before we start. If you can hear my voice clearly, put a one in the chat box. Thank you. I'm going to be getting right into it. Shout out to Thomas Green. Thank you. Shout out to Mal. Good to see you on the stream tonight, brother. Shout out to Gail. We're going to get right into it. Uh, I'm not going to even pretend that tonight's stream is a happy one. Uh, this, this particular subject that I'm going to just talk about tonight is one that has bothered me a lot since it started. Um, very sad, very sad. Uh, what happened with uh, with this young sister, Shanquilla Robinson? Um, I'm going to start off by just kind of giving a short bio of who she was. <clears throat> well, first I'll start off by saying this: uh, anytime there's a death in our community, no matter who it is, and no matter how it happened, it should be for us a tragedy. Because a tragedy for one of us is a tragedy for all of us. And what I what I find to be very disturbing and sad is that we don't we don't tend to think that way. Um, we tend to think only if a tragedy affects us personally. But it really doesn't bother us, it seems. It seems, I'm not saying it doesn't bother some of us. It just doesn't bother us in large enough number to make it, to make any of it make any sense at all. And to where any effective action is taken as a result of the tragedies that we end up experiencing in our communities. Uh, we have gone down such a dark rabbit hole as it relates to our community. I mean, the rabbit hole is dark and it's deep that we are not moved. We've become, it seems, numb to tragedies because we've seen it so often and we've heard about it so much throughout our lifetime. Um, it's just, for some of us, it's just, it's just what happens. And uh, what's really sad about it is that we're the only community that takes that position when it comes to death that takes place in our community. We're the only race of people that respond so weak when it, be when it comes to uh, tragedies and deaths and murders. And, and even if we do respond, to, some, to what we deem as an injustice to us. We tend to only have that energy 
when it's someone that shares or that I should say that does not share our reflection. And I think that's pretty sad. I think that's pretty sad that the only way we can be moved to respond with passion is if someone is killed in our community or an injustice is had in our community, but it's had by or at the hands of someone who does not share our reflection. We tend to know exactly how to respond. Oh, we'll have marches and we'll protest and in the negative sense, we'll tear up our whole community, burn down buildings and tear up stores and turn over cars and oh man the passion and the energy that's exerted when we believe that something has happened to us at the hands of someone who does not share our reflection that is a testament against us as a people when that's the only way we respond and even then we don't respond long enough to get real results. So tonight I'm gonna to talk about a young lady who was allegedly, and I have to say allegedly because there's still an ongoing investigation, but we know what happened. But I'm gonna use allegedly for internet purposes. Uh, I'm gonna discuss something talk about something um, that happened to a young lady her name again is Shanquela Brenada Robinson she was 25 years of age she was born January the 9th 1997 she was born in Charlotte North Carolina she uh, attended um, West Charlotte High School from what I understand, she was a great student, very smart, very intelligent, very good student in high school. She then went on after graduation to attend Winston-Salem University. But then again, graduating with honors. She didn't stop there. This young lady went on to start a braiding business where she catered specifically to young girls. And I've seen, I've seen some of her work. I wish I could share it uh, with you in the stream. Uh, I would suggest those of you that have heard about this story, go on Google, go online and look up some of the work that she did with her, uh, with her braiding business. She was very, very talented, um, very ambitious. Uh, again, she had a braiding business. It was called Exquisite Braids where she focused specifically on young girls. And I mean, she did a great job. Very, very talented, beautiful young lady, young sister. She didn't stop there. It was very successful. She started a boutique, which became very successful in the Charlotte downtown area called Exquisite Boutiques, where she had her own clothing line. She worked very tirelessly doing photo shoots to promote her own clothing line, which became very, very successful. And in her spare time, when she wasn't working so hard, because from what I understand, she had a very strong work ethic. She worked very, very hard to be successful. She was extremely ambitious. And on occasion, when she didn't have to work as hard, she would take trips and go out of the country and you know, to treat herself to her hard work, you know? This particular trip was nothing different than any other trip that she's taken in the past. Except the only thing that was different about this trip is that the friends that she brought with her, or I should say, so-called friends that she brought along with her to enjoy the trip had a whole entirely different agenda 
whole entirely different agenda. They booked a villa in a part of Mexico, Mexico called Cabo, Cabo, Mexico. A very expensive villa known as Villa 35. And again, uh, go to Google and find out the particulars about this particular villa. Very beautiful uh, place, six star location. I mean, this wasn't no small, uh, low key place. This was very top of the line. Top of the line. We're talking about five bedrooms, two full baths, one half bath. We're talking about a basement with a wine cellar. We're talking about a full living room. We're talking about a game room. We're talking about a full patio with a swim up, with a swim up bar on the pool. We're talking about everything you could think of. All the bells and whistles were there. This was a top of the line um, facility. And it was priced at about $1,300 per night. She arrived there April the 28th. I mean, I'm sorry, Octo uh, October the 28th, pardon me. October 28th, she arrived there in the early uh, evening of, of October 28th. And then subsequently, allegedly was killed early morning, October the 29th. Now, uh, this is a very troubling story. And why is it so troubling? What makes it so troubling is because all of the individuals that was on the trip with her, these are people that she trusted. These are people that she deemed as her friends. These are people that she would have gone to sleep around and felt safe and felt that she was in no danger. I don't think anyone would travel 2,000 miles away with anyone if they felt that they were not safe, which, what, which is what makes this story so sad. It's what makes it so sad because uh, I will tell you, when you find yourself ambitious, when you find yourself uh, wanting more than what you currently have, the danger of it all is you trying to take those that you care about along with you, not realizing, not realizing that you can't take everybody with you. One thing I can tell you is that if, if a person is desirous of elevating themselves, to a different level, you're gonna find many along that course that you cannot take with you. I mean, we've seen it with so many different celebrities. We've seen it with rappers. We've seen it with actors. We've seen it, especially in our community. We've seen this. We've seen this sickness, which I would, I like to dub as jealousy and envy. That when you see someone who shares your reflection succeeding something happens on the inside of many of us not all of us but many of us that we we don't care about you being successful just don't be more successful than me instead of looking at the ambition of one another looking at the drive that we have to be successful, taking that as a lesson and then using it as an example of what we also can do. Because there's enough room in the world for all of us to be successful if that in fact is what you desire. Uh, it's so troubling to, to see that we hate to see each other succeed. We just hate to see each other succeed. Now, let's go back to the events 
that took place in Cabo, Mexico with uh, Shanquela. And I want to say, uh, before I begin, uh, my condolences go out to Miss Shahandra Robinson, which is her mother. And my sincere condolences for your loss goes out to her father, Mr. Bernard Robinson, and her sister, Quayla. Uh, my sincere condolences go out to you and the loss of your daughter. And the helpless feeling that I'm sure that you had in knowing she was 2,000 miles away and you could do nothing to protect her. So let's go on. What also makes this extremely disturbing to me, and it even angers me, is the fact that not only was she, not only did she believe that she was in the presence of friends, people that she should have been able to trust with her safety. But she was in the presence of one individual that she deemed her best friend. Mr. Khalil Crook. Well, we, we definitely know he was that, a crook. Crooked in the worst way. This is supposed to be her best friend. This is an individual. This is a young man that has gone out on family trips with her and her family many different times has been close to the family intimately close to the family for five years they trusted him not only did Shanquella trust him but her family trusted him and felt comfortable with her with their daughter in his company they didn't feel no harm could come to her in the presence of Khalil Crook. Not at all. And I'm sure they believed in some way that she was safe with the individuals that was also present because these are individuals that she went to college with. That she graduated with. All along. I personally believe these individuals had a plan that she knew nothing about. That she knew nothing about. And what's even more egregious about this event is that there were adult men present. Oh yeah, there were adult men present. Mr. Nazir Wiggins who arrived according to himself. He arrived a day late. Well, the investigation is gonna prove whether that was the truth or whether that was a lie. Mr. Malik, who was another individual there, who filmed the incident, who was also the voice that said to Shanquela, why don't you just fight back? do something, but yet did nothing himself to stop the incident, which could have, oh man, which could have possibly saved her life. Khalil, why didn't you jump in to stop the fight? These were men that were present. I'm not gonna discuss their sexual orientation, no sir. But I will tell you this, regardless of what their sexual orientation was, DNA still will say that that was a man, which means he's stronger than the females that were present. Why didn't you stop it, Khalil? Why didn't you stop it? Why didn't you stop it, Malik? Why didn't you question or have the necessary questions required? Why didn't you call the authorities if you got there late, like you so eloquently said? Why didn't you get in touch with the authorities when you found out she was not responsive? You said she was non-responsive, right? And then you said something extra stupid, like, uh, 
you laid beside her and you played soft music and rubbed her hair. For what? If you knew she was unresponsive, isn't it common sense to call medical, call for medical attention? What was your problem? Nazir? And what was your problem, Malik? Who's so silly and so weak sat around videotaping the incident, seeing that she was unable to defend herself, watching her take a beating that would ultimately take her life. So sad, so sad. And what is it with you? Uh, the young lady who was beating her, if you hear the string, what is it with you? In seeing that she would not defend herself, that you continued beating her anyway. What is it with you? Other than the fact that you are as savage as the savage beast. And Winter Donovan, you had to get your two cents in too, right? So you put your hand on her too. And from what I'm understanding, your chokehold, which slammed her to the ground, grabbing her by the neck, lifting her, and then slamming her to the ground, apparently, allegedly, is what broke her neck and severed her upper spine. And what severed her upper spine. So, what was your problem? Obviously you had one. Pardon me one second, folks. Thank you very much. Yeah, so, Winter Donovan, what was your problem? I'll tell you what this looks like to me, folks. This looks like to me a deep-seated uh, envy and jealousy. That's what it looked like to me. Now, there's rumors about other things of which I won't comment on this stream until the investigation is complete. But there's some other things that I've heard about what sparked the fight, what sparked the attack on Mrs. Shankwella. I won't repeat them in this stream until the investigation is complete because I don't want to be one to say anything that would hinder these savages from going to prison. And they are going to prison, no doubt, uh, no doubt. Shout out to the content creators all over YouTube, all over social media. Shout out to you for keeping this story alive. I intend to do the same until justice is had, not only to her family, but to her, Shankwala, who had to lose her life to these lowlifes. Shout out to Crimson Cure. Shout out to Angry Man. Shout out to O'Shea Duke Jackson. Shout out to the NC Beat, headed by Gerald Jackson. Shout out to you, man. Salute to every content creator that has gotten on social media to push this story and make it relevant. I will tell you this, social media and all of its demons, and all of those who use social media for the most ignorant thing comes with a curse and a blessing. The blessing is, if there was no social media, this story could have easily been like so many others, forgotten. This young lady would have died and you'd have never heard anything about it. 
But because of social media, <coughs> excuse me, because of social media, and because of content creators that were willing to share the story, is the reason why the story got exposed in such a large way. And as a result, thank God, her family may in fact get the justice that they deserve. And these six individuals will end up doing the time in prison that they deserve. And not on U.S. soil. I started a petition that I hope all of you in social media, those of you on my group that are members, and those of you that see it on Facebook and on YouTube, that you would have enough sensitivity in yourself to sign the petition. Sign the petition. Everything counts. I also shared her GoFundMe page, which was started by her sister. Donate to it, however small or however large. But let us not continue being the person who sits along the sidelines and do nothing. This is the sad, dark rabbit hole that the black community has fallen into, that nothing bothers us unless it's absolutely happening within our own immediate family. Outside of that, we don't have much passion. We don't care much. We don't respond much to anything unless it affects us personally, which is sad, which is sad. It's a testament of how foolish we have become. What has the black community become today? It's sad. I will tell you, I pray, I pray that every single hand, the ones that touched her physically and the ones that sat around watching it doing nothing, I pray to God that justice is served and that you are apprehended and that you are thrown in the deepest part of a prison in Mexico. Absolutely. I pray that the hands of the law get their hands on you for doing that and treating that young lady like you did. Horrible human beings. I won't give you a pass at all. <clears throat> Horrible human beings. Not even fit to breathe the same air as everybody else. Uh, they went what makes this story even more egregious folks that after allegedly she was killed not only was she left in the hotel or the villa but they returned back to the United States allegedly they used money that belonged to her, her credit cards, or any cash that she had available in her personal belongings. Hmm. Then after they returned to the United States, so devil-filled, they went to her mother's home. Mr. Khalil Crook, that's who went first. And he spun the same narrative that he told her mother from Cabo, Mexico, that she wasn't feeling well because she had suffered alcohol poisoning. Then following that phone call, he then called his, her mother again and said that she had passed away due to alcohol poisoning. Now, after they attempted to cover up the activities that they had done in Cabo, Mexico, where Shanquella was concerned.
They then returned again to the United States. Went to her home, her parents' home, and spun that same lie that it was alcohol poisoning. Only to find out through an autopsy that her neck was broken and that her back, her upper portion of her spine was severed. Now I want you to understand how much force it takes to break someone's neck. Not only that, but how much force it takes to sever or break someone's spine. It takes about 500 pounds of pressure. Equivalent to a car crashing into a brick wall at 30 miles an hour. That's how much pain, that's how much pressure, that's how much force it takes to break someone's neck and to shatter their spine or break their spine. That tells you the level of aggression that was taken out on her. And the question is for what? For what? When this young lady booked a villa and then invited you all to attend with her in celebration of her so-called friend's birthday. It's really sick. It's so sick. Man. The fact that uh, adult men stood there videotaping it. Men, <laughs> like I said, regardless of what they want to consider their sexual orientation to be, I don't care. DNA says you were men. So men stood there and watched it and videotaped it. And these are supposed to be her friends. What kind of dark rabbit hole have we gone down into? Because it's not going to stop with Shanquella if we don't wake up. It's not going to stop with Shanquella. It'll continue. It will continue. It will continue. And we will continue responding the same way. This stream right here that I'm doing tonight with 241 members should be 241 members on the stream. But see, this is how we are. This is the sickness that we have. We got time for everything else except what's important to give our time to. This is the sickness that we have. And black people, why, why is it that you don't see the sickness? Why is it that a group like this, let's talk about it, with 241 members, tell me why 241 are not on a, on a stream titled The Murder of Shanquilla Robinson and the Dark Rabbit Hole of the Black Community. What subject will make you support? We don't support anything. Not even issues that could have affected your daughter, issues that could have affected your wife, issues that could have affected your granddaughter, issues that could have affected your personal family member. Uh, it goes back to what I said. We don't give a damn unless it's somebody personally in our own family and even then we're weak at our response. But for someone else outside of our family, we could care less, it seems. Sad state of affairs for the black community. While the whole world gets to watch how we respond to each other and what affects us. I started off the stream by saying this, until we get a mentality where we understand that a tragedy for one is a tragedy for all of us, we will never see the results uh, in our own community, among our own people, 
we will never see it. What community should respect a people that don't respect themselves? What community should respect a people that don't care about themselves? That don't care about the death that happens in their own communities from state to state, city to city, town to town, country to country, wherever we find an individual that shares our reflection. Tell me, huh, tell me, brother and sister, what people should respect us when we don't care about ourselves or what happens to us when every other nationality you can't even say something about some nationalities without catching backlash. But we can, it seems, have anything done to us with very little response. Very little response. Oh, we're passionate in quiet. We're passionate in private. I should say. Very passionate in private but very weak when it comes to a public response. That's us. That's the dark rabbit hole that we have fallen down into. The dark rabbit hole. I'm gonna continue as long as I have a platform on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. I'm going to continue as long as this, as long as this uh, story is being had, I'm going to keep all of you updated as best I can as to how things unfold until I see these maggots in jumpsuits, whatever color Mexico's jumpsuits are. I don't believe justice would be for them to be convicted in the United States, no. They need to see what a real jail looks like and that's Cabo, Mexico. It's not like the United States with air conditioning, no. No, it's not like the United States with air conditioning uh, in the summer and heat in the winter and cable TV and libraries and internet access and, yeah, you know, a resort with bars. No, it's not like the United States. They need to spend the rest of their life in a prison in a country where they committed the crime. Again, my condolences goes out, sincere, deep condolence goes out to Mr. Shahandra Robinson and Mr. Bernard Robinson, uh, Shanquela's parents, who can no longer hear her voice again, who can no longer see her face again, who had to bury their daughter yesterday, Saturday, at 11 o'clock, as we speak, she is already underground. I pray God's peace on that family uh, because it's a pain that will never, ever go away. It never goes away. It's a pain that you learn to deal with and move on in your life, but it's a pain that absolutely never goes away for a parent to have to bury their child. It never goes away, ever. You die with that pain. So again, my condolences goes out to that family. And to the local FBI, to the US, the United States FBI that are investigating this case, do it with due diligence. Bring these individuals to justice and to the government of Mexico, Cabo, do your due diligence to bring these individuals to justice. I understand that your tourist situation there in that country is something that the country relies upon. I understand it has a big part to do in the economy and I, I get it. I get it, but if you want to continue with the right viewpoint and perspective as it relates to Mexico and those potential tourists that would uh, later visit your country, you might want to you might want to move fast, not slow, fast. 
on getting this situation resolved and bringing these individuals to justice because they have now put a black mark on your country as a result of their actions. Her family deserves it. Shanquilla did not die in vain. She deserves it also. These individuals that she trusted, that she dropped her guard with, needs to come to justice. They need to be convicted. Not for a little while, for life. In the worst prison conditions possible. Absolutely. Very sad, sad situation. Very sad situation. Her mother, because they left the body in Cabo, Mexico, her mother, they had to pay $6,000 just to transport their daughter back to the United States. Mm. So you tell me, do you believe they deserve any mercy in how they did it? Not at all. I'm asking everyone who hears this stream, if you've seen the petition that I put up, sign it. Sign it. I promise you, it's only going to take a few seconds of time out of your life. Sign the petition. And share this stream. Share the stream. Like the stream and share the stream. That way the, that way the stream gets out to more. That's what it's really all about. Again, like I said, this wasn't a pleasant stream to do. I just had to speak on it. It bothered me so deeply and it still continues to bother me and it should be bothering you. For those of you that hear this stream, it should be bothering you. This should not just simply be a story to talk about, but it should be bothering you. It should be bothering you. With that being said, I am your host. It's another stream of Let's Talk About It. Justice for Shanquilla Bernada Robinson. Good night, folks. <laughs>